Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. And I'm sure for anyone who deals with cars or all-terrain vehicles, you'll eventually end up with a pile of jump packs that aren't aren't very good or a little shaky. They just can't qu quite come up with enough amps to do anything with. Or you end up with an all-terrain vehicle battery. Or in my case, I could get these gel cells for 10 bucks each. Anyway, you get them and they're dead or you get them and they're weak can you do something with them can you actually recover them so I've had some luck recovering these batteries with this Viking charger the only problem with this is if your battery isn't like 11 volts it will not click on it won't even try right if your battery voltage is really low it, it really won't try so if your battery is only a little weak, this thing will kind of, you know, try to bring it up. It goes to a, a pre-charge sequence, and you might recover it, you might not. So as I was watching uh, videos, I actually watch quite a bit of your guys' videos. A lot of times I don't have time to comment, but I actually do watch them. I, I was watching a, a video by Sean, Mr. Fix-It Lee, and he bought this battery charger that has two modes actually three modes i guess it's got a maintain it's got a charge and it's got a pulse mode so when i saw that you know i said that's interesting but then he had a second piece which is this battery tester here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how the two of them work um the instructions are like lousy <laughs> so I'm going to show you how the two of them work and what I'm trying to do with them and I'll let you know if they're any good so let's start out with the charger I have the charger hooked up to this jump pack and it's not plugged in and the jump pack is not turned on um, as soon as you turn on the jump pack it tells you it's 7 degrees Celsius down here, and this thing has 13.2 volts on it. And it just goes back and forth between the two. So when you plug it in, it kind of goes to a sequence, and it did it too quickly before I could get the camera on, but it, it, it started to charge, and as soon as it realized it wasn't trying to take any amps, it gives you that full right there. But there's the secondary mode on this thing, and it's a pulse mode. And what it does is it keeps pulsing this thing, desulfating, desulfating the plates, and it improves the charge. So even though this thing is fully charged, according to this, right, it is now pulsing it and cleaning up the plates. So after you let that thing sit there and pulse on this thing for a while, now the next question comes up. Did I improve the cold cranking amps? Did I make this battery any better? So this is kind of the old-fashioned way to test. You put that on, clamp those on, and you hit this switch here. And, you know, your meter comes up telling you what kind of good you are. And this gets really hot. If you have a really big battery and you leave it on too long, this heat will damage your gauge here. So do be careful with that. So anyway, that's the old-fashioned way. There is a better way. So after Sean's video, um, and he had the blue charger and this thing in the same video, um, this is a 12-volt battery analyzer. And let me show you how that works. Right now, it is clipped onto the battery, and it does a four-wire measurement, so you have to get that little copper block and the outside of the clamp both connected to the terminal. So having done that there, you turn it on, and I think you guys could see it. It's telling me 12.56 volts, and now it's ready to go. So you just hit enter, bang, and it says battery test on top, view results, language, all that other stuff. Obviously, you want to test the battery, enter, 
Obviously, it's out of the vehicle, right? This is a gel battery. Um, AGM gel. I'm just calling it a gel. I'm going to measure this in cold cranking amps because that's all I care about. They do have these other modes you can test it in. But once again, jump pack battery for an all-terrain vehicle. You go with gold cranking amps, in my opinion. I have it set to 125. And the reason why I picked 125, this is your typical all-terrain vehicle battery, cold cranking amps, uh, 120. I've also tested a bunch of these. They all seem to come in at somewhere around 120, 130. So that's why I picked that. That's the battery I'm testing. It goes all the way to a thousand, I believe. And once again, with the up and down arrows, you can move that number up and down. And when you hit enter, it's going through a test mode. And it comes back with, this is a good battery. Volts right there, measured 118 cold cranking amps, rated 125 cold cranking amps. Um, state of health. Um, they did some math that 118 over 125 state of charge. You could see this is 94% charged. If you fully charged it, it would improve, and that's the internal resistance. I've used this meter to test a bunch of batteries, and I've used this thing on pulse mode. And let me tell you what I've discovered. I've hooked it up to this stone cold dead <laughs> all terrain vehicle slash motorcycle battery. And I had it on there for several days. And it went from 0.8 volts up to about 5.5 volts. Um, but it produced no power, no cold cranking amps, right? You put a light bulb across it, it goes right back to zero volts right and it stays there so i could not recover this battery and once again this was on several days call it a week um so does it fix everything the answer is no then i tried it with a bunch of these guys and these two jump packs and what i discovered when you fully charge these batteries and even the jump packs they come in somewhere around 110 115 cold cranking amps and by using this thing in pulse mode after about 24 hours you seem to improve the cranking amps about 10 percent so obviously it appears to be doing something right the pulse mode does seem to improve things so um this is the jump pack I changed the battery in, and you can see it's got the little recharger on it, which makes it easy to hook to that guy. Or I just hook up the leads, turn it on, and go through the pulser. This guy, I don't have the extension on, so I have to do everything through the leads. I also tried the pulse mode. I had it on here for about 48 hours. This thing is stone cold dead and it stayed stone cold dead. This one was coming in once it was charged at about 110 cold cranking amps and it went up to 132 cold cranking amps. Once again, these things more or less all have the same battery in them. So they should be all coming in around 125. My conclusions. I believe this pulser works. And I believe on some of these batteries, it'll probably bring them back to life. Sean, Mr. Fix-It Lee there, he had one of these gel cells that looked like it was shot out of a cannon. I mean, it had a cracked case and everything else. And he started out at Stone Cold Dead. I'm not quite sure how long he left it on there. But it can take a week or two. <laughs> Once again, week or two. Not 
day or two, week or two to improve your battery. So if you are going to do this, make sure you set this up in a place where you can check on it occasionally, like a few times a day. Make sure the battery is not overheating and getting into trouble. It does work better at room temperature, better than being cold. But once again, I'd set it up someplace where you can really keep somewhat of an eye on it so that you don't burn things up. Anyway, Sean, Mr. Fix-It Lee, he took one of these batteries that was mechanically trashed and he managed to bring it um, back to life. And he put this old-fashioned battery tester on it and he had the element red hot in there after he got the battery all charged up. So, from that point of view, it worked for him. For me, I tried it on some cold, stone cold dead battery packs and batteries and I did not have that kind of luck. I could not bring them back from completely dead. And once again, like this guy it was on for just about a week on a bunch of these others. I, I hooked it up for several days and once again, they went from like 3 volts to 5 volts or 6 volts. And then you put a lamp across them, they go right back to zero or two volts when you take the lamp off. But with the lamp on, they're still, as, they go to zero and they don't have enough power. They're not able to push enough, enough current to light up the lamp. But having messed with all this stuff, what I really, really like is this battery meter. You're able to do a four wire test which will more or less give you the same results here as there, but you don't have to go all dead short on the battery and light up that, that heating element, right? So I like that about this. I also like it's small and portable. So if you go to an auto junkyard and you're going to buy a battery, you could see what kind of charge you have on the battery, and you could get its state of health. You can see how many cold cranking amps you're able to push so you can kind of pick the best used battery out of the litter now it's no good talking about these things unless I show you where to get them in my case I got them from eBay you could probably also get them off of Amazon this guy is known as the Ansel BS 100 12 volt car battery tester I paid 32 bucks for it, and I think that's, it's worth it. Um, how many batteries, you know, can you get from a junkyard that has a really nice shape, or how many batteries could you test and figure out what you're going to do with them? I mean, that that's a nice item. The LCD 12-volt repair and charger, battery charger, that was 23 bucks. So this is 23, the Viking somewhere around 30. The pulse charge on this thing, though, you can pulse charge, even if the voltage is extremely low, it will do pulse charge on it. And I think you can hear here, there's a fan in this thing that helps keep it cool. And I believe this thing do, is able to do as much as 6 amps. Yeah, this thing is good for 6, where that's for 4. So I, I, I think the combo pack could be helpful. What I recommend is if you have a jump pack that's just getting a little bit weak, if you give it like 24 hours worth of pulse, I mean, charge the jump pack first, Give it 24 hours worth of pulse. And with this meter here, I think you'll see that you improve the cold cranking amps. Um, I haven't used either one of these since I've pulse charged them. I've only done tests with this end cell to show that that the, um, the cold cranking amps have come up. In both cases, I mentioned them after they were charged, right? And I used a Viking to charge them. And then I pulsed them, 
and the coal cranking amps went up you know somewhere around 15 cold cranking amps they typically went on the average from a they started out at 115 cold cranking amps all three of these and they landed at about 130 cold cranking amps after you let them sit for a while you'll notice some of those cold cranking amps um, bleed off but they're still better than where you started so I, I think it really is cleaning up the plates a little bit. Now, if your battery is pretty good, as in the case of those three, I would not put it on there and let it run for a week, right? These things are good for about 125 cold cranking amps. And I think once you get them up to their maximum capacity, I don't think additional charging will do them any good. So let's get back to the original question. Can you revive a battery? Can you use this to revive a battery? The answer is, it seems that you can make a weak battery better, but I have not had the experience where a battery is stone cold dead. I have not had that come back to life. And I've tried it one, two, three, three times. And if they're stone cold dead, they seem to be stone cold dead and they seem to stay stone cold dead. If they're just weakened a little bit, it does seem to bring things back to full capacity. Would I recommend it? I definitely recommend this guy. I like the ability to uh, go out there and determine the state of health of whatever battery I'm working on. So I like being able to figure out what the cold cranking amps are. So I like that a lot. The Pulsar is only $23 more, right? So um, that's that's really not, not going to um, hurt you too bad. When you put those two numbers together, you get to $55, and you say to yourself, well, you know, one of these stupid jump packs, you know, $49 on sale, by the time you get done with tax, right, you're at that $55, give or take. If I can have one of these last an extra year or two, these two things will more or less pay for themselves. And that's kind of always what I'm after. Will the thing, will they earn their keep? Anyhow, um, I want to thank Sean, Mr. Fix-It Lee, for, um, for showing these to us. I wanted to try them out myself to see if they would work. And once again, I didn't quite have his success of bringing a, uh, a really trashed battery back to life. Um, the battery he had, though it was mechanically damaged, Inside it might have still been in decent shape where these guys Right, they just might be completely completely dried out or completely completely plated over And once again, I went a long time. I figured if I went The major part of a week for all of them that it would it would bring them back, but it, it really just did not So there we go. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe please remember to keep your feet down your heads up and get out and enjoy each and every day bye now